Welcome to the studio. We are scoring the brand new and very popular Q1 Pro from Chidi. There are so many 3D printers on the market right now that it is almost impossible to keep up with which machines at the various price points offer the greatest value. This 35 point scoring system that I put together helps solve that by giving each 3D printer a unique score based on the features and their implementation. This allows you to pick a budget or a printer and see other printers with similar scores and maybe even helps you find your next 3D printer. If you aren't familiar with my scoring system, I highly recommend that you watch a couple of my YouTube videos on your favorite machines um, and even download the score sheet and follow along. And I'll have a link to this score sheet as well as other scores on the screen or in the description. Now this is a weighted scoring system and that basically means that we have to take into account the value that a feature offers the overall 3D printer. If we used a simple one to 10 scoring system for every feature, it wouldn't make much sense because a less valuable feature like power loss recovery is nowhere near as important or valuable as an enclosure or multicolor system. Now, like any scoring system, this is quite subjective, but I promise I'm trying to be as fair as possible. In fact, you might even think my scoring system is a bit harsh. I'm a tough scorer, but I promise you that if you score along with me, you'll find out that your scores are probably pretty close or even identical to mine, or at least close enough that the difference is negligible at the end. Now keep in mind that you can score all the machines that you like too, and use your own results to find that perfect machine for your needs. So you can go use this scoring system against any 3D printer that you like and, uh, and get your score. In fact, I even invite you to download the score sheet or at least bring it up on another screen uh, so that you can follow along with me. And I'd love to see your score, put it in the comments. Now my 35 point scoring system is broken down into three main categories, the setup, core, and features. Now with a bonus at the end where I get to either add or remove points, which is fair because I think uh, on paper, printers are much different than actually using them in person. So once they're here, it, it's a little bit different. Now, okay, here we go. Let's get started with the setup of the machine. So unboxing. Now it has a max of five. This particular machine was incredibly simple to unbox, throw it up on the bench and start the first print. Matter of fact, um, you heard me say in a previous video, it was about five minutes or less. So for the unboxing experience, it's pretty good. Um, I'd say it's a three out of five. Assembly really isn't much to assemble. Like I said, we pulled it out of the box, put it up on the bench, other than adding the spool holder and kind of pulling out some of the shipping uh, retainers, it was ready to go. So I'm actually gonna give it a four out of five, which is actually a really good score. That's actually the best assembly score I've ever given. Aesthetics, it's a good looking machine. I don't know, some people don't like the cladded plastic. I actually do. I think it gives it kind of like a, a space age kind of kind of feel to it. So for aesthetics, I think I'm gonna score it a four out of five. Bed leveling. Bed leveling gets a five out of five because it's automatic bed leveling. You don't really have to do anything. Um, once you start a print, it bed levels and goes on. Z offset, that's a five out of five because it has automatic Z offset and it does have baby stepping. Included models, you've heard me talk about this before. I think it's really important and I kind of wish all machines that showed up had a massive amount of included models so that people get these machines and they can just start printing and experimenting with things. Even practical prints that can be used around the house, I think that would be kind of cool. This just has your standard Benchy and a couple other things on it, so I give it a two out of five. Now, first print quality is actually really good. So the Benchy that came with it was about 18 minutes um, and it turned out fantastic. Hopefully you're looking at some B-roll of it right here. But uh, overall, I'd have to probably say it's about a seven out of 10. It's a really good print. It'd be kind of hard to get a 10 out of 10. Let me give a huge thank you to Chidi for sending us over this Q1 Pro to share with our audience. If you're interested in this machine, I'll have a link on the screen and in the description. Okay, print speeds. This one's pretty simple. I basically give one point for every 100 millimeters per second that's kind of claimed or marketed. So this machine is marketed at 600 millimeters per second, so it gets a six out of 10. Now keep in mind that even if it doesn't meet the 600 millimeters per second uh, that's claimed by marketing, it really doesn't matter because even if this whole thing is off by one or two points, again, that's negligible in the, in the overall score. So just keep that in mind. All right, build surface. This one has a double-sided PEI flexible steel sheet, which like I said, I think that that's kind of standard now. I think if it was a single-sided sheet, I'd probably score it a two, but since it's a double-sided sheet, we'll score it a three out of five. The heated bed for this one, this one gets up to 120 C. And the standard 
build plate temperature is about 100 C. So instead of a three out of five for being kind of average, this one gets a four out of five. Okay, the extruder, um, they kind of market it as a really special kind of extruder. I'm, I'm gonna say that I think it's just an average extruder. I don't see any reason why it, it deserves anything more than just kind of like good. So I know that sounds harsh, um, but it, I'm just gonna score it a three out of five. The hot end on this machine, it's not a quick change hot end, but it is the new cartridge style hot end. But I do feel like that cartridge style hot end is about average right now, because kind of like almost all 3D printers are going with it now. I think if you don't have that, then you score less than three. But this one, I'm gonna put at a three for having a cartridge style hot end. It's two bolts, pretty quick to change out. The nozzle temperature on this machine gets up to 350 C. Now 300C is your kind of standard temperature that we're seeing on machines now. And so because this one gets up to 350 for those more exotic filaments, then I'm gonna put this at four out of five. The nozzle in this particular machine, well, you don't get a point for having a nozzle because all printers have nozzles. But, uh, and if it just had a brass nozzle, I would probably score this at zero. But this one does use a bimetal or a dual metal nozzle. So we're gonna go ahead and give it one out of two. Linear motion system. So this is a Core XY machine and it's gonna use uh, basically rods all the way around. Um, so I'm gonna give two points uh, for each axis. So that's two, four, six for the linear system. It's pretty solid. Parts cooling on this one, eh, not so good. It uses a single parts cooling fan and uh, that's kind of ducted around both sides and a little sliver around the front. You've seen the prints that we showed off in the uh, initial video that we did on the Q1 and they're good. Um, can they be better? Yes, it can. And it also does have a curtain fan on this side. So I'm gonna say parts cooling. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a two out of five. I know it sounds harsh, but, but I'm trying to be as fair as possible. Firmware. The firmware for this is Clipper. And I know Clipper's super popular right now, but one of the things that, uh, that kind of people gave it a negative for, um, I really didn't care, was that Clipper was a couple of years old on this machine. I don't see these machines as firmware and hardware separate. I think that I see these machines as appliances where Chidi chose this particular firmware with this hardware for the best user experience. For that, I kind of give it a, a generic right in the middle stamp. It's a good implementation of Clipper and overall I think the, the firmware is good. So I'm gonna give it a three out of five. The user interface. This particular machine has a 4.25 inch touch screen that is uh, resistive touch instead of capacitive. And uh, I mean, the overall the user interface is pretty simple. It's nothing advanced. Um, so I'm gonna give it a two out of five. Now noise. Noise is the only metric here where I remove points. So I think that a perfectly quiet printer would probably get, I don't know, maybe a zero, though I wouldn't take points away. Um, but this one, it's not super quiet, like the Bamboo A1 or the A1 Mini. Um, this one still puts out a little bit of noise, but it's nothing like something like the Two Trees uh, SK-1 or anything like that. So this one I'm gonna put minus three for noise. Today's video is generously sponsored by Polymaker. They are the official sponsor of all of our content. In fact, if you've never used Polymaker Filament before, you can use LM Show First Try for 15% off your first order on the Polymaker website. All right, let's get to the last category, the main features. Spool holder. You don't get points for having a spool holder. Every 3D printer should have a spool holder. And uh, unless it's exceptional, you're not really gonna get any, any bonus points for this. So as far as a spool holder goes, um, the fact is, is that it's mounted here on the side and kind of awkward, kind of weird. Um, I'm just gonna give it a zero. Power loss recovery. Like I said before in the very beginning, because this is a weighted scoring system, you, you know, each feature has to have a relative value to the overall machine. So the max score for power loss recovery is a one. So either you have it or you don't. So for this one, it does, so we give it a one. All right, belt tensioning. I went ahead and scored belt tensioning as a two because Chidi has automatic belt tensioning on this machine, which is pretty nice. Filament runout sensor. Yep, it does have a filament runout sensor right in the top of the tool head. So filament runout sensor, one. Lights. That's actually one thing that I really like about this particular machine um, is it does have full lights inside the uh, enclosure. So for lights, I give it a two. Camera, it does have a 1080p camera right here inside the enclosure up here. So I give it a one. Offline file transfer. So basically how this works is how do you get your prints to it? You can do that via USB. So I give it a one. Network, I give it one point 
for Wi-Fi, one point for Ethernet. This one only has Wi-Fi built in, so it gets one point. Remote management. This is a max out of three, and this does have clippers, so it does have remote management. It's not the best remote management experience, but it is good. It's the clipper experience, so I give it two out of three. Enclosure, yep, we have an enclosure. Matter of fact, I think we have a pretty fantastic enclosure, one that I like. I like the aesthetic, I like everything about it. It's really solid, so I give it out of 10, I give it a seven. Accelerometer, yep, it does, I like that. I don't like it when they hard code that stuff into the uh, firmware, so it uh, gets a three out of five for accelerometers on the machine. MMU capable, well, we want to think that Chidi is working on MMU for this machine. Uh, we can't be positive. There's been some rumors. Um, we can see on this back side of the machine right here, and we can see that they have a coupler, which is maybe indicative that they're working on something like that. Uh, we have a tangle sensor up here in the very back of the machine that indicates that maybe they're thinking about doing something with uh, MMU. So with that, want to believe that they are, but because it's not here, unfortunately, I have to give it a zero out of, uh, out of eight. Cable management. Now, I consider uh, cable management all cables, wires, tubes, everything, right? So the only downside to this machine, as far as cable management goes, is that the PTFE tube that comes in on the top into the tool head does rub on the lid here. In fact, let me pull the lid off and show it to you. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this? Whatever right here, see this marking on the lid? That is uh, from the PTFE tube rubbing in the top of the printer. So as far as cable management goes, I give it a two out of five because of that. It would have got a three if it weren't for that. Motors and drivers, they're good, they're silent. So I give it right middle, that's kind of an average kind of thing. And it's not doing any super secret uh, uh, frequency testing to reduce the sound or anything like that. So I give it right in the middle, three out of five. Build quality, so out of 10, this is a big one. Um, I think Chidi kind of prides themselves on building the machine uh, like I said, having a solid frame, nice and squared from the factory, cladding it with these injection molded panels. Um, I think the build quality is good. I think that like the, you know, the weak kind of spool holder, um, it is bulky. Um, and, I, and I think that there are obviously are machines out there that have better build quality. Um, like I said, wait until you get yourself into some Ray 3D machines. They're, they're built incredibly well. So for build quality, I'm gonna stick it right in the middle, which I think is incredibly fair. And I'm gonna say five out of 10. Slicing is super important and it's part of the overall user experience. And Chidi sent me over profiles for Orca Slicer, and they worked out really well. Um, I know that the other people were using Prusa Slicer and, uh, and of course even a modified Cura, but I think that as far as slicing goes, it's a good experience and it's kind of the average experience uh, of 3D printers right now, so I say five out of 10. That leaves me with my overall impression. Now, like I said, ultimately specs on a website, on paper, that is one thing, but actually having experience with this machine, using it myself, I really think that uh, that, that kind of changes things a little bit, which is why I'm able to kind of modify the score a little bit, either adding or taking points away. Um, this is an enclosed machine. It's a Core XY machine and it's beautiful. It is a really nice machine. And there's a feature that I haven't mentioned yet that you already know about if you've seen some other reviews on this. And that is it has an active heated chamber. And that heated chamber comes from an element down here in the back corner. It's, you can't see it quite down there, but I think that that warrants a couple of extra points for the overall experience of the machine. Um, so that's gonna come in handy when you're printing those exotic filaments, and I think that's why a lot of people are gonna be getting this machine. So my overall impression score, I'm gonna give it an extra two out of 10 points, which gives us a total of 102 points which is actually a really good score. What do you think? Was I fair? I hope I was. Did you score along with me? Drop your scores in the comments because I'd love to see what you thought of this machine. And don't forget, you can go see all of our other scores and links to the other machines and any videos we have on them at loyal.ms slash scores. I'll have that on the screen and in the description, of course. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you on the next one. Go score some printers, do it.